So I thought on Fridays I'd be changing things up. We're going to be taking a look at um, the two newsletters that I read every week, Iowa Dev Weekly and This Week in Swift, and just kind of go through and, like I normally do, find the ones that interest me and then dig into them a little bit. I thought it'd be a good way to break up the, the Monday to Thursday study sessions. Um, <clears throat> so one thing I found interesting in Iowa Dev Weekly was this link here, customizing the file header comment and other text macros. This is a new capability in, in Xcode 9. So basically you don't have to have the standard um, uh, header text anymore. You can actually customize it to be whatever you want, which is great for me because I agree with the author that the last thing I want is to have all these comments. Um, they're not that helpful. You can see the name of your file here um, in the finder, and these names tend to change when you refactor things, rename things, and you have to manually update your comments. So this is a very quick tutorial on how to go ahead and uh, make that change. So what you need to do is you need to create a new plist file called IDE templates, template macros.plist. And to do that, you go into Xcode, new file, and there you can filter down um, property list, right? So it's not plist, it's property list. So you create a new property list file. And the, the name of it matters because the Xcode is going to be looking for this exact name. So IDE template macros plist. You can just save that on your desktop to start. You, you get a blank plist like this. And then basically we're gonna be adding in uh, one line, which is the key is gonna be file header. And then we're gonna have the string be whatever we want the string to be in the comments that will be created with every single file. So for me, I honestly don't want anything. I'm That might change. Maybe I'll put a date at some point but um, I want to keep it really, really simple. Um, but there's a lot of different options that you can use. So you can, he has a whole list of them, things you can use. You can use date, file name, file header. You know, maybe I could actually see the date coming in a little bit handy. So you can see when a file was created. I can't think of a practical reason why, because you can just look in, in your Git repository, but Let's try it out. So let, let's first just try it out by putting in uh, whatever. We'll put in a little emoji. Oops. All right. So you get a little kissy icon with every new thing. And so we're going to take that file and there's a bunch of different places you can save it. So depending on if you want it to be global, so all of your projects will get this behavior, or if you want it to be just certain, just for workspaces, just for you for a specific project. So for me, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to make it a global setting. So Drag it from the desktop over here. Okay, there we go. Now, all you have to do to test this out is in your Xcode beta, you're gonna to wanna to create a new project. Okay, let's see if it worked. All right, in our view controller, we get the little kissy face. So perfect. Um, we might as well try since we're here to update it with the date. So IDE template macros, we'll open this thing up and Let's go back over here and how do we do the date? We looks like underscore underscore date 
underscore underscore. Let's see if that works. Okay, close that, we'll create a new file. <clears throat> That didn't work, so let's see what it should be. One, oh, okay, triple underscores, that was the problem. I only had two, so we need to go back and update that file to use triple underscores. So it's obviously not user friendly, it's not the kind of thing you're changing all the time. All right, let's try that again. Okay, great. So we have kissy face and any Unicode character can work apparently. And we have our date. So that's, that's great, right? That's exactly what we're looking for. So not a big deal, but if you're like me and that those headers bother you by default, that's just how you can go ahead and kind of quickly change them. Uh, couple interesting things with simulators that I saw in WWDC, but this, this article is actually pretty good. Um, Xcode 9 really steps up its game with simulators. Um, you can go into full screen mode, which is nice. Uh, so the biggest one for me is this one. You can have multiple simulators open at once. So if you're developing like a chat app or something, you can have two separate instances of your chat app running on the screen at the same time and talk to each other. That is something that's been kind of a pain before. You can resize the simulator and you can record video in the simulator. So this is makes it a lot easier to uh, create some simple like App Store videos or if you're just making like a, a video. I like to make videos for clients a lot to show them the progress of things uh, in between builds. It's going to be a really great way to do it. Let's look at these over here. Um, you know, just by watching WWDC, I've seen that Apple's really starting to invest in, in machine learning. And you see signs of it everywhere. Um, this machine learning journal is just, I guess, another indication that they're taking it seriously. And from what, I, you know, from everything I've seen, it's not easy yet to incorporate machine learning um, but it's a lot easier than trying to roll it yourself you know it's, they provide a lot of high level apis and i think as time goes on and they start to see how people use it it's going to be easier to create models and integrate models uh, yourself so the one that i was really interested in um, from natasha's list of links here is this one using the vision framework for text detection in iOS 11. So the vision framework is on top of the machine learning framework. It's sort of a higher level API and it can do things well, like detect faces, detect ring, excuse me, detect uh, rectangles. And this is an article on basically how to use this text, how to create text detection using these APIs. So I thought this was a really interesting one and seems pretty well written. So maybe we want to start going through this one as well. So I'm, I actually grabbed the starter project already. And 
and I'm actually just installing uh, the latest iOS 11 on my uh, development iPad right now, so I'm not sure if it's going to be up and running in time to actually play with it during this uh, session, but we'll get started with the code anyways. Okay. Let's clean this all up a little bit here. So here's the starter project. And we can at least run it in the simulator real quick so we can see what it looks like to start. Oh, well, look what they give us to start with. So it looks like app delegate isn't nothing special here. So can, I always like to clean up this kind of crap. So just for me, it's easier to understand what's going on the less like uh, the less text that you have, it's, it's kind of extraneous. The easier for just me personally to understand what's going on. It's probably a little OCD thing as well. So simulator finally builds. So we have a pretty simple looking UI here with words and letters. So we'll see if we can come across those in the code. We'll go to the storyboard. So we've got a UI view controller called just, just the view controller class wrapped in a nav controller. We have an image view that is pinned just to the edges here. Looks like there's a reference to that. In our view controller, we're importing AV Foundation and Vision. There's that outlet for the image view. You did load. Let's get rid of that because that's not doing anything. We're not handling memory warnings. So let's kill that. And it looks like we're going to be implementing. This is going to be conforming to the AV Capture Video Data Output sample buffer delegate <laughs> okay i've never used this one before so this should be fun called whenever an av capture video data output instance outputs a new video frame so every time we get a new frame that's what it's called capture output so we get an instance of av capture output did output a buffer, and that's a sample buffer for a connection. Okay, cool. Let's go back to the article. So in this tutorial, we'll be leveraging the vision framework for text detection. We'll build an app that will be able to detect text regardless of the font, object, and color. As shown in the picture below, the vision framework can recognize text that are both printed and handwritten. I mean, that's pretty awesome, the fact that we can do this on device. Um, this wouldn't really work well calling an API because it's, uh, it's video-based, so there's, there'd be way too much latency. So if you're gonna do something like this, you pretty much have to do it on device. So we got the starter project going. Okay, please note, we're gonna to have to run Xcode 9 to complete this tutorial, great. So, creating a live stream. When you open the project, you'll see the views in the storyboard are set up and ready for you. Click on the code skeleton, right under the image view outlet, declare another property for AV capture session. Okay, so let's create our session as a global variable here. No, as we're doing, let's just, I'm not super familiar with this, so I um, have to learn as we go here. AV capture, AV capture session is the central hub of the AV Foundation capture classes. To perform a real-time capture, a client may instantiate this, add appropriate inputs, 
which is a device input and outputs, such as a movie output, to start the flow of data from the inputs to the outputs. So this session handles that flow. All right. It is used whenever you want to perform some actions based on a live stream. Okay, next we need to connect the session to our device. Start by adding the following in uController.swift. So we're just going to add a helper method called start live video. Ah, let's add it and then we'll go through it. Okay, let's take a look what we got here. So we're gonna do, on our session, we're gonna set a session preset variable to preset photo. Let's see, let's see what this tells us. Specifies capture settings suitable for high resolution photo quality output. Okay, so this is saying we're gonna have high quality output. Let our capture device be an AV capture device for video. So we're gonna be capturing video. Device input. We're going to be using our capture device for this input class, okay? And for output, AV capture video data output. Capture output that records video and provides access to video frames for processing. All right, cool. We're going to set up our output. We're going to, I guess we're going to do some settings here on our output. So we're going to have a CV pixel buffer pixel format type key, cast as a string from this type here, okay? Then we're gonna set our sample buffer delegate to self. That's what's going on down here. And then to our session, we're gonna add an input and an output. Finally, we're going to have an image layer initiated with our session. We're gonna set the frame of that layer to our image view from the storyboard. And then we're going to add that layer to our image views layer. Okay, and then we're gonna start running. All right, let's see if they have anything to, interesting to say about that here. Modify the session. Define device input and output and add a subway. Okay, cool. So now when the view will appear, we want to run that. We want to run that. Okay. So don't forget to call super when you're in view will appear. Start live video. Okay, since the bounds of the image view is not finalized, the view will appear, override the view did layout subviews method to update the layers bound. Okay. So our View controller lifecycle here is the view will appear will fire and it will do our session setup. And then afterwards, view to layout subviews, this is towards the very end of the view controller lifecycle. We're going to um, update the frame of the image views first sublayer. Our image views layers first sublayer. So this um, image layer down here. We're going to update its frame to be the image views bounds. Okay. It's the kind of thing I would never think of off the bat, but that's, that's great. And then because we're going to be using the camera, we're going to have to update the P list with the camera, G, camera usage description. So let's go ahead and do that.
Oh, privacy. Okay. Camera uses description. Great stuff. Okay. So the live stream should work as expected. However, there is no text detection going on because we haven't implemented the version framework. So basically this will get the video processing going, but it's not going to do anything in terms of video. Okay. So we can't unfortunately use the simulator for this because it won't let us use the, the video camera. But let's see if I just got iOS 11 installed on my test device. So let's see how that works. Where is the development team? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just got to pick my development team. Hi, Sarah. Okay, so you guys can't see it right now, but I just got the prompt asking for permission. And this part is working at least. So we're getting this live video data stream that we can work some magic on. What I'd like to be able to do is share that with you guys. Um, I have this reflector thing, which sometimes works. Okay, now I should be able to connect to the reflector. Of course, this is my First time using iOS 11, so everything's a little bit weird for me here, but let's see if I can figure this out. Adam's iMac, all right. Let's see. Okay, we're not gonna waste a lot of time on this. I, I will get this figured out for next time. Okay, sorry, screen reflector. Let me get rid of you. Okay, moving on. Implementing text detection. So before we implement the text detection part, we need to understand how the vision framework works. Basically, there are three steps. Requests. Requests are when you request the framework to detect something for you. Handlers are when you want the framework to perform something after the request is made or handle it. And observations is what you want to do with the data provided with you. So we tell it what kind of thing we want the vision framework to do pass it to handler, then we get our observations back. <clears throat> to start, let's begin with a request. Right under the initialization of the variable session, declare another variable as follows. We're going to create an empty array of VN requests. Okay. So this is kind of a good moment to talk about tutorial versus real architecture. Um, doing this kind of like sloppy architecture of just throwing a bunch of public variables all around a view controller is fine for a demo like this. 
but it's not something you would ever want to do for a production app. You want to have separation of concerns and you want to be able to essentially control and hide these properties. I think a lot of people know that, but people that don't get trained properly in architecture, you know, they learn through tutorials and it just gets reinforced because you see everyone do code like this. And when you go to do real work, you, you know, you play how you practice, right? So it's okay to do it, but it's also really important to keep in mind to think about architecture. So of preaching, let's check out what a VN request is because I don't know. Abstract superclass for image analysis requests. So this must be the vision framework request. This is an abstract superclass. Okay, so we have an array of those. Now let's create the function that will start the text detection in the view controller. Let's see what we got here. So we have a text request. Uh, oh, okay. Detect, we don't have that handler yet. So let's go grab that handler. Self dot detect text handler. Yeah, okay, here it is. So we'll just add this because I'm not good with trying to code while there's still warnings. Okay, so start text detection. We're going to have a text request, which is a vision framework, detect text rectangles request. So this is that first step of basically telling it what you want, making a request. Let's image analysis request that finds regions of visible text in an image. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. And you pass in our completion handler. Report characters boxes. Let's see what that is. Determine whether or not the bounding box of individual characters should also be defined in the resultant observations. Whether or not the bounding boxes of individual, oh, okay, so we want to not just have the the rect for the whole text. We want each individual character to have its own rectangle. Okay, cool. And we're gonna set our array of requests to be this one text request. Okay, so yeah, let's go back. Let's go back and see what they have to say about this. Okay, in this function, we create a text request that is a detect text rectangles request. Basically, it is just a specific type of VN request that only looks for rectangles with some text in them. When the framework has completed this request, we want to call the function detect text handler. We also want to know exactly what the framework has recognized, which is why we set the property report characters boxes equal to true. Finally, we set the variable request created earlier to text request. Okay. Now at this point, we should get an error. That's because we have not defined the function that is supposed to handle the request. <laughs> nah, my OCD picked up on that pretty quick. So we're just gonna, we already pasted this function in. Um, we begin by defining a constant observations, which will contain all of the results of our request. So all of the observations that come back 
from this request are going to get stored in this observations variable. Let's just take a quick look at that. So we have a request and it has a property of results. Let's check it out. The collection of observations generated by processing the request. The only valid time to access this property is after the request has been processed by request handler, which in our case is what we're doing. If it failed, it'll be nil. Otherwise, it'll be an array of zero or more. Okay, cool. So we're going to guard against it. And if it's nil, we know that there was a problem. And that's what we're going to print out here in bail. And then we're going to have a result. And we're going to map the results. And I guess we're just going to cast them as BN text observations. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at that. Describes a text area detected by the da 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 da, -da with rectangles request. Okay, so it has character. It has an array of observations that are character boxes. All right, so we're going to get a bunch of rectangles back that have characters in them. So there's our result. And what are we going to do with that thing? In the code above, we begin by defining a constant observations, which will contain all the results of our rectangles requests. Next, we define another constant named result, which will go through all the results of the request and transform them into text observations, basically downcasting them. Now update view will appear, start live video, start text detection. Okay. So let's see. I guess this is all there's nothing async going on here, so this works. Okay. If you're in your app now, you won't see any difference. This is because while we told the rectangles request to report the character boxes, we never told it how to do so. Right. We just had the request uh, variable that's just sitting there. This is what we'll accomplish next. Try the boxes. <clears throat> in our app, we'll have the framework to draw two boxes one for each letter it detects, and the other one for each word. Let's start by creating the function for each word. All right. We'll call this part of our vision helper method here. Okay, what's happening here? So we have a function that's supposed to highlight word and it takes a has a parameter of a box, which is an observation. So this is one single observation. Okay. So we're gonna say give me that boxes character boxes. So I, I guess if you have a, a word with a bunch of of letters, it should give you the box for each of those letters. And if it doesn't have anything, or if it's nil, then it's just going to return. And we're going to set some variables here. The max x is such a 10,000, 0 to 10,000. So we're going to have a grid. So for care in boxes, so in each one of our boxes, we're going to enumerate through and we're going to be working on that character's box. If the character's bottom left dot X is less than max, so if it's within our grid, max X equals character dot bottom left dot X. Okay, 
if the bottom right dot x is greater than min dot x, so if it's greater than zero, we're gonna set min dot x. Ah, okay, this is, these are our starting values, okay? I'm gonna do the same for, for the y's. So our y coordinate is the max x. So our max x, if it's lower than 9,999 in the bottom left corner. <clears throat> uh, let's look at this. I just assumed I knew what that was, but I, I mean, we can guess, but let's take a look at it. I think I need to learn this shortcut a little better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Ah, there it is. Control Command jumps right to it. Although it's kind of ugly. I will just do it my other way. All right, so all right, let's just assume that it's the bottom left corner x variable. So if that, say it's 500, it's less than 10,000, which it is, max x is now equal to that value. So okay, so it's bringing it down. So it's, it's just kind of trying to find the, it's gonna bring that, so if it's 500, it's lower than 10,000, it's gonna bring it down to 500, and max x is then 500. If the next time max x is 1,000, it will be, it'll be skipped because it'll be larger than max x. So max x, they're trying to find the smallest max x and the largest min x, and vice versa for y values, okay? So then we're going to take we're going to get our coordinates by taking that max x, multiplying it by the image views, frames, width. All right. So if it's five hundred, multiplying it by the width. Okay. Y coordinate one minus min y. The width is just subtracting min minus max. Same for height. Okay. Outline is going to be a layer, and we're going to set its frame with these properties up here, give it a border, give it a color, and then insert that layer into our image view. Okay. Let's see what the author has to say about that. <clears throat> In this function, we begin by defining a constant named boxes that is a combination of all the character boxes our request is found. Right. Then we define some points on our view to help us position our boxes. Right. Then we create a layer with the given constraints defined and apply it to our image view. Next, let's create the boxes for each letter. Okay. So it looks like very similar code, except that we're not doing that size checking thing. So this parameter, this is a text observation. This is a rectangle observation. Okay. We're gonna get the coordinates. We're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna stick in this layer and this one's gonna be blue and that one's gonna be red. So the words are gonna be red, the letters are gonna be blue, okay? So more with the code, we use rectangle observation to define our constraints that will make outlining the box easier. Now we have all our functions laid out. The final step is connecting the dots. <laughs> right, famous last words. There are two dots to connect. The first is the boxes to the handle function of our request. 
Let's do that first. Okay. Update detect text handler. Yeah, we just have that result thing that's been lying out there. And you've, yeah, we'll do this and we'll talk about it. So we have our warning. We're going to make that go away. So cases request, an observation thing is hand, happening on a background thread. We are going to um, dispatch to the, the main thread. We want to update the UI. On our image views layers, we're going to remove subrange one. Okay. Then for region in result, for region in result, what is the type of result? It is a text observation. So for the region inside each one of our results, so let urge equal region. Otherwise, so if it's not nil, we're going to continue. And then we're going to call highlighted word with our region. So I guess a region is a observation. And then if let box is equal, so if region is not nil, get the character boxes. And then we're going to loop over the character box in boxes, and then we're going to highlight, we're going to call the highlight letters with that. Okay. All right, that's fine. Begin by having code run async. First, we remove the bottommost layer in our image view. That, that was a little confusing to me, but that's cool. Let's see how that's done again. That's the dot, dot, dot. Remove subrange. Dot, dot, one, dot, dot, dot. So that gets the bottommost one. Yeah, syntax that I haven't really seen before. length of the function. Okay, cool. If you notice, we were adding a lot of layers to our image view. Yeah. Next, we check to see if a region exists within the result from our observation. Now we call in our function, which draws a box around the region as we defined it. The word. Okay, so just, yeah, that's the first one. Then we check to see if there are character boxes within the region. If there are, we call the function which draws a box around each letter. Right. Now the last step in connecting the dots is to run our vision code with the live stream. We need to take the video output and convert it into a CM sample buffer. Okay. And the extension that they the empty extension they provided for us, insert the following. All right, let's do that real quick. So copy is right here. Here's that empty, oh, no. Sorry, right, I thought they'd stub this out. So we want to capture this entire thing here. Okay, so this is a delegate, this is one of the delegate methods. This is the delegate method. This is basically like, okay, your video stream did output a buffer. What do you want to do with it? Cool. This I never am a fan of just magic numbers like that. Uh, <laughs> that definitely makes me nervous. Uh, can we just use the right enum? Property orientation, what is that? Uh, 
zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can we just type in dot up? That would be way better. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Whenever you got the enum, you just want to use the enum. You don't want to try to, you know, be cute with the guessing the right number because then it doesn't mean things to people later. So, okay, let's see what we got here. So, we're going to guard that we have a pixel buffer. CM sample buffer get image buffer sample buffer. So we're taking this parameter and we're going to get a CM sample buffer image buffer. All right, I have to admit, I don't know what that is. Returns a sample buffers CV image buffer of media data. Okay, so media data. Caller does not own the return buffer and must retain it explicitly if the caller needs to maintain it. So if you need to work with it, yeah, we retain it. Okay. Request options. We're going to have VN image option. Is that what we have up here too? No other requests. Um, what are you, buddy? That won't tell us. Option keys pass and the request handler. <laughs> to do, redocument. Okay, well, it's beta, right? Request, so it is of type option. We're gonna making a dictionary of type option any and just initializing it as empty. So if let cam data equals CM get attachment, Returns a specific attachment of a CM attachment bearer. Man, you know, this is all so new to me. This is the kind of thing you really have to kind of dig in and study, I guess, um, to get the terms right. Oops. Okay, so we're going to get an attachment based on the sample buffer. Sample buffer attachment key. Oh, okay. Camera intrinsic matrix. No. Okay. So make sure we got one of these things. And request options is going to be camera intrinsics cam data. All right. Well, this is a little bit of Greek to me. So let's see if the author has anything to offer about this. Hang in there. <laughs> I'm trying. The extension adopts the AV Capture Video Data Output Sample Buffer Delegate Protocol. Basically, checks to see if the CM sample buffer exists and is giving output. So, okay, is, is it there and is it outputting video data? Next, we create a variable called request options, which is a dictionary for the type VN image option, which is a type of structure that can hold properties and data from the camera. Ah, okay. So VM, VN image option holds metadata about the camera, properties and data. Finally, we create a VN image request handler object and perform the text request that we created earlier. Hold up, okay. We got our cam data. We put that into our request options dictionary. That is the type any, with the key being camera intrinsics. Image request handler. So here's our handler. So this is the third part of the box that we talked about at the very top. So we have request, handler, not, no, my bad. That's the, <laughs> that's the second part. Okay. Handler is VN image request handler, and the parameters are the it requires a CV pixel buffer. So we have our pixel buffer from up here, an orientation, and options that we created here. Okay, 
And then we're going to do a, a do catch and we're going to call our image request handler perform self dot requests. All right. Um, let's see what we can do. Okay, so I can show you guys that it is not crashing. Um, I got some, I wasn't really prepared for this, but we'll show it some text. Hmm. Okay, well, we see some boxes, that's something. Um, let's try an iPhone. Can it see anything on an iPhone? Ah, this might be weird. Oh, no. I don't know what Turbo Squid is, if anybody... <laughs> it's one of those weird things you get in your nose. Like, what the hell is squid? So I see it trying. I see little red and blue boxes. Oh, this these aren't yeah these aren't buttons or anything. Those are just that's just a legend. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not having a ton of success. Um, wonder what kind of logging we can do. First, okay, so let's put some breakpoints on errors. Text observation, what can we find out about box? What does it tell us? Box has character boxes. All right, I have another idea. Okay, let's just try writing something really simple. Like, Like I just wrote the word hi on a piece of paper, super big letters. And I don't know, it's not picking it up. Seems to have picked up my shoes for a second. Man, I don't know, it's a bummer. Um, let's see what we can do here. So it doesn't really, it doesn't tell us what character it is. It's not like we could print that out. Let's just do a print statement here where it's like print. We got the box. Wait, actually, boxes is a box, not character box. We've got boxes. Oh, 
okay. Let's just see if that even shows up. text. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Um, start. Okay, so starting the live video, starting the text detection. Detect text handler is here. Okay, let's see if that gets called. Okay, <laughs> that definitely gets called. Um, let's put it down here and make sure, wait, sorry. And we can even put a breakpoint on it too. Okay, what is in result? Fair enough, because there's no... Okay, so that's getting called. For region in result. Let's see if we can print out a region. See if we can get a trigger on anything. Sorry, this is probably crazy boring for you guys. Oh, okay. I'm showing my keyboard and it's going nuts. Interesting. Let's see if I can show this to you guys. So I want to show it my keyboard. It's seeing all kinds of stuff. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder what I'm doing wrong to, to this not reading text. I wonder if the lighting in here has to be better. Maybe my handwriting is just so bad that it can't even pick it up. Oh man, that's a bummer. Read Exclude Pleasure. I wonder if I can use the stuff on the screen.
All right. Well, I not having. I feel like I definitely learned a lot. Um, kind of how the basic structure of the vision stuff is supposed to work. A little bit more about the um, AV pipeline stuff. So it was really helpful. It's kind of a bummer that it didn't work as well as it obviously did for the author of the app. Um, I'm going to continue to play around with it later, but thanks for anybody who tuned in and feel free to, uh, let me know what you'd like to talk about in the future and, uh, yeah, we'll study together. Thanks.